What's up guys? We are back with another Super 7 Ultimates Power Rangers review and we're taking a look at probably my most anticipated figure in this wave. I'm not, I know I did Lord Zed first, it's just, it's Zed. He needs, he needs the spotlight. But the Megazord is, I mean, far and away something I've really been looking forward to, especially because we've already gotten Zords in this line and we didn't get the Megazord first. It's like, this should have been the first one by all accounts. You'd think that this is what they would have done, but Super 7 rarely does what we expect them to do. So I'm really excited to get this thing. It's also super, super heavy. There's there's definitely a lot of figure in here. We still have the slip covers for this wave. This is a slightly oversized box because it's a slightly oversized figure. You've got the coin on the front that has all of our, of our dinosaurs, of our prehistoric beasts. The back gives you the MMPR logo. Pop that slip cover off and we've got our Megazord there in the big window. You've got your MMPR logo down there on the bottom, lightning bolts on both sides, and then the back gives you a shot of the Megazord from the show, as well as a write-up for what this big thing is. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Super 7 Ultimates Megazord, a figure that, I mean, just at face value, I've really, really been looking forward to getting this just to check it out in hand. Ever since I saw that first render, I knew that there was gonna be a concerted effort to make this thing very suit accurate, which, as far as an action figure goes for me, is something I've really wanted. I have, in my collection, probably the most screen-accurate Megazord toy, I think, ever. The X-Plus Megazord that came out about seven years ago. It's humongous, it's way too big to be on screen with this thing, but this is probably as close as we're gonna get to that. It's very, very suit-accurate, and I'm really happy with it. I think it looks terrific. Articulation, as you might expect, is gonna take a hit because of that, because this thing is super boxy, it's got kind of a weird squat stance, and it's just, it's boxy. It's gonna suffer because they wanted to go aesthetics over movement, but I don't think I really care about that after getting it in hand. So as far as moving them around, you've got a head that can look up and down actually really, really well. Really nice tilt side to side here also. You do have a full rotation, of course. Arms only go out that far. They swivel. You've got a single jointed about, I don't even know what degree that is, really low, swiveling uh, elbow. You've got hinges and rotation at the wrist there. Torso is unsurprisingly locked down. There is no crunch on this thing. It does have tilt though. Somehow they got tilt in there. And then there is a twist, but this piece right here is soft. So while that does allow you to kind of, I don't know, test it a little bit, I feel like it's gonna warp over time. So watch out for that. Legs are very similar if you've messed with Transformers Ultimates to like Megatron or Trax in Wave 2 in that they're stuck behind this, you know, diaper thing. So they kick forward and backward. You've got a twist and they kick out a little bit, but this is soft. So watch what you're doing there. You do have, you know, knees, but they're only about that far. Mine were really, really tight. So watch out and they do swivel, of course. There is still ankle movement down here. Like the Triceratops head's going to go up and down a little bit. It's largely not needed though, just because of how boxy he is. So, you know, like this thing, it is articulated. It's not super dynamic as a result of its construction, but I feel like there should be, you know, some sort of appreciation for the fact that it is still very suit accurate. So I'm not too hung up on this when it comes to articulation. It's still very in line with like the T-Rex Zord or the Dragon Zord either. None of those move all that well either but they excel in other ways. So, you know, your mileage may vary on how much this bothers you. I don't really care about it too much after getting in hand, but of course it is all worth mentioning because it is still pretty locked down from pretty much anywhere except the, the head, honestly. But ultimately beyond that, no pun intended, I don't care. Like I really don't care. And I'm not, I'm not gonna make excuses for the fact that this thing isn't well articulated. It's very limited. There is no getting around it. This thing is not gonna be the most dynamic figure on your shelf by any stretch of the ma imagination. However, this may be one of the best ultimates I have ever gotten my hands on. Just from top to bottom, I love so much about this figure. Just in the visuals, just the way it looks. This looks like it jumped right out of the screen. Surely there are a few more things that could maybe have been painted or maybe have been changed. I'm sure there's a little bit here and there that isn't 100%. But I'll be damned if this isn't like one of the best looking Zord figures I have ever seen. It absolutely annihilates the T-Rex and the Dragon Zord as far as I'm concerned. Both of those, I'm a big fan of. This though, 
Like this just immediately gives me some like nostalgic flashbacks. A lot of it is this head too, but the rest of it is just the boxiness of this figure and how big and beefy this thing is. It has a tremendous feel to it. It's got some heft. I mean, look at it. As far as an Ultimates go, this thing is covered in paint as well from head to toe. So, so much paint, so much little detail, metallics, matte finishes, lots of different finishes, which I think is pretty exciting for, for this figure in general. But it's just so well done. Proportions are great. Uh, it's got that boxiness to it. One thing I'm going to note, because I'm sure somebody's going to mention it, is the stance on this Megazord. This is also another thing that's very suit accurate. You see how the legs kind of go outwards? They aren't supposed to go straight down. The suit stood like that because of the result of these big boxy zords down at the bottom. It can't put its legs together and be, you know, upright normally. So this is supposed to be this way. At first, it kind of caught me off guard, and then I realized what was going on. Even my X Plus is the exact same way. It's those little things that I think stand out to make it as suit and screen accurate as possible. All of this, you know, little like greebling detail on the saber tooth tiger that has all of that paint on there. Looks terrific. The metallics really pop and stand out. The big shoulder pads look great with the M on the side. And of course, you know, you've got the pterodactyl breastplate with more metallics all over it. The cannons on the back, you know, the sculpted tail on the back from the T-Rex, you know, this is the tail lift it up and then fold it back down. So a lot of those little things that are like callbacks to how the Zords combine really stand out and look terrific. But at the end of the day, a lot of what really does it for me and brings it all home is the head sculpt. This looks super, super, super suit accurate to me. The colors, the proportions, the sizing, the overall shape of it, it's so different from a lot of the other stuff that we get in toy form that is, you know, made in a certain way to accommodate transformation or just stylized for stylized nature. This is not. This is really close to the suit and and I'm going to I'm going to give them credit where credit is due. I think in many ways this may be one of the best looking ultimates that they have ever made in any line. Now for some size comparisons, let's go with other Ranger stuff. We're going to do ultimates. So we've got Goldar here on the on the right. And he stacks up. That works really well. Again, this is supposed to be part of it. He's supposed to be able to fight the Rangers and the Zords, and that works really well. And while this, you know, obviously these aren't in scale with each other, it gives you an idea of what he looks like alongside a Ranger. Now let's see about uh, another Zord. So here's the Dragon Zord. And you can see the Dragon Zord is pretty much the same size. Dragon Zord's a little chunkier, and of course he has a tail, but these two stack up really nicely as well. And then for a different Ultimates, let's do something that is, again, you know, a robot. There's Megatron from Transformers, and they match up pretty nicely also. And then let's do a couple different lines just for general scaling purposes. So here is a Mythic Legions. And here is, let's do a Figu Arts. So there's Piccolo. And then let's do one more. Let's do a, let's do a Hasbro figure. So here is... Blue Marvel, just to give you some normal 112-ish representation. So this thing is big. It's bulky, it's beefy, it's certainly not the biggest Ultimates ever, but it's close. It's got a lot of size, it's got a lot of heft, and it's going to fit in really well with stuff in this scale that are also big boxy robots. Now, as far as accessories goes, the Megazord is kind of on the light side, which isn't too weird. It's pretty normal for what we've seen with the Zord so far. There's really only so much that they're going to give us with this stuff, and I, I kind of understand that. To start with, we do get some hands, so he's got gripping hands on him now. You get a set of fists, just regular fists, nothing crazy there. We get a couple of the little mini rangers, and I guess the other rangers come with these or the other Zords. I'm not sure where all of these have come from at this point. Uh, so you've got a yellow, and you've got a pink. And we get a coin, so like a Morpher-style coin. So this is the one that has all of the beasts that make up the Megazord. So T-Rex, Sabertooth Tiger, Mastodon, Pterodactyl, and the Triceratops. It's also got the Z on the back, you know, Z for Power Rangers. So that's really cool. Again, this is also uh, full metal, too. So this is, this is sturdy. This is really heavy. I like these. It's maybe an unnecessary thing, but it's kind of cool. And then, of course, we do get like the signature weaponry. So we get the Mastodon shield, which is really well done. It's nicely proportioned. It's really big and bulky. Tons of paint on it too. Again, just like with the figure itself, a lot of paint on that. The only real negative when it comes to these is that the limited elbow articulation is gonna sort of play a factor here. Doesn't seem to really be a big deal, but just keep in mind, you're maybe not gonna be as dynamic as you want. 
And then of course the same goes for the Power Sword here, uh, which looks great. It's really big, very, very well proportioned to the Megazord. It's got a lot of paint on it again as well. You've got the, you know, the ribbing inside of the handle for those silver uh, lines. You've got the gold inlay detail there and then nice metallic paint on that sword. So really no complaints in general about accessories. I would have liked to have seen, however, an energy effect because there are plenty of instances or ways where one could have been provided. Uh, one like a slashing effect for the sword or something that comes out of the head or something that comes out of the cannons on the back. Because while it wasn't the most common thing to see in the show, it did blast stuff every now and again. So not the biggest deal, something I would have liked to have seen, but really this is where it's at. These two pieces, really well done, very integral to this figure. So yeah, overall, this is a winner, but it's also got some caveats with it because I feel like this is not going to be for everybody when it comes to every little thing. Articulation took a hit, for sure. It's not the most mobile thing ever. It's boxy. It's weird proportions. But it's all about show and suit accuracy for me. And this thing, I mean, I don't think there's anything else at this size or anything close to this that looks this close to the suit. This looks terrific from top to bottom. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. There is so much paint on this figure in comparison to damn near every other Ultimates out there. I think that in general, there is a clear sign that some care was taken in with this one and just some love was put into making this look as close to that suit as possible because a lot of toys don't look like the suit and this very much does. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And you know, again, like I mentioned, putting it up against my X Plus Megazord, they're very, very similar, and that that's a big benchmark for me. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Ultimates Power Rangers Wave 3 Megazord. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.